Okay, so in this video, we're going to be doing an example of a statically indeterminate uh, beam deflection problem. So our goal here is going to be to determine the reaction at the roller B. So this is our goal. And this here is going to be the roller B. And so this is statically indeterminate because we have one more support um, here than... Um, than what we usually see in a determinant problem. Um, so we don't have the number of equations we need to calculate this. So we need to um, change this up. So we kind of have to adjust our procedure here to solve this problem. So I wrote out over here the procedure, um, the general procedure for this problem that we're gonna do. Um, it's gonna depend a little bit on that type of problem, but this is a pretty general procedure. Um, so our first step here is to remove the redundant support. So since we have more redundance um, than we do equations, we need to go ahead and remove this, this B here. So what we're going to turn this into is I'm just going to copy and paste this whole thing down here. So this is going to become, we're going to remove this B support here and then this calculate the deflection of the beam just to this loading. So we're not going to have any deflection at A or C and this is going to deflect something like this. And this is exaggerated, but we'll have a deflection like this. And we're going to use superposition for this. So I kind of copied and pasted the superposition tables over here. And so in this case, uh, for this one, we have a load applied off center. So we're going to be using this equation here this set of equations here. And B in this case is going to be the distance from the roller. Uh, change this up. Distance from the roller support. So we have a roller support over here. So that means that B is going to be equal to four meters. And one thing I kind of forgot to mention is we're going to want to find the deflection at this point at B here. So that's going to be X equals to six meters because the reason we want to find it here is because we know that as a boundary condition that since we have a support at B at X equals six, our deflection is going to be equal to zero. So we're going to kind of need that and it makes our lives a little bit easier if we know that. So let's go ahead and use um, the equation here. And we're going to be using the, I guess for either the same thing, this one and this one, they're really the same thing. Um, but we're going to be using this and we're going to be evaluating it at this point. So we're going to be evaluating the deflection here. Um, so let's go ahead and just plug it into the equation. So our equation is going to be y equals negative p, which is our load, times b times x over 6 ei times l and then we have l squared minus b squared minus x squared so if we plug everything in that's going to be minus 50 that's going to be kilonewtons uh, b is going to be four meters x is going to be six meters over six ei l is going to be the whole length of the beam so l is going to be 12 meters and this whole thing is going to be multiplied by 12 squared minus 4 squared minus 6 squared. And so if we plug that in, we're going to get that y. And let's call this y, due to, let's call this y, y due to the force. And we're going to get that. That's equal to negative 1533.3 kilonewton times meters to the third over ei. And we're just leaving this in terms of ei. For the units, uh, this meter is going to cancel out this meter, and then these are going to be meter squared. So it's kilonewton times meter times meter squared, so kilonewton meters to the third over EI. And this is going to be the deflection due to this force here. So this is going to be one part that we need. And the reason it's negative is because it's going down. So our next step is basically what we're going to do is we're going to add the redundant back. And so we already did the contribution to the force, so this part's done. And we're going to add the redundant back and calculate what that um, deflection is going to be. So again, just so this is a little bit more clear, I'm going to copy and paste this part down. Copy 
and we'll paste it here. And so now we already took care of the force here. So we took care of this, we can get rid of it. And so now we need to do take the, the function to do the support, but we can replace the support with the support is going to be causing a, have a force upwards. So we're just going to call this by here. And so this will deflect, we'll do it in a different color, uh, maybe in blue. This is going to deflect something. There's going to be no deflection at the supports here, but if we just imagine that this support, that this force didn't exist and this force is counterbalancing it kind of, then we'd have some kind of deflection here. And so X is still equal to six. We're still calculating the deflection at B, right? We're still calculating the deflection here. Um, but, and we'll call this Y the deflection due to B. And let's go back to our chart here. Since we have, basically this is a load applied right in the middle. This BY is applied at X equals six and our whole beam is 12 meters. So we can actually just use this equation here because since we have a symmetric loading on here, our maximum will occur in the middle. We could also use this equation, we'll get the same answer, but um, this one's a little bit easier. So if we go ahead and plug that in, we're gonna get YB is equal to negative P, which is the load, which is what we're solving for, L to the third over 48 EI. So if we plug that in, it's gonna be negative, and actually this is gonna be, I was reading off the equation, but it's gonna be positive because this is going up. So it's going to be BY is our load, and our L is the whole length of the beam, which is 12 meters to the third over 48 EI. So if we do that math here, we end up at this is going to be 36 times BY over EI, and that's going to be going up. And so this is going to be the deflection to B. So the last step we need to do is we need to use our boundary conditions and we need to use these two things that we found already. So this and this, and we kind of talked about this before and we're gonna use these to find what the reaction at B. So we're gonna be finding this BY here. So if we scroll back up to our original, we know that we're gonna be having zero total deflection at B here because there's a support. So that means that our total deflection, if we write down here, is gonna be equal to zero at B, which is at X equals six. So that means that this contribution here and this contribution here have to add to zero. So we're basically gonna write that, uh, we'll call this YF plus YB equals to zero, which means that negative, we write this negative 15, negative 1533.3 over EI, and we'll don't forget the units, uh, plus 36BY over EI, and I forgot the units on this, it's the same units, kilonewton meters to the third, it's equal to zero, so we can set these equal to each other, right? So we just move one of them over, so we can move this one over here. And if we do that and solve, we're solving for BY here. If we do that and solve for BY, um, well, maybe I'll just write it out just to be, we end up getting this. I'll leave the units out for now. So the units are the same, they'll cancel. These EIs cancel. And we just divide by 36 and we're left with BY is equal to 42.6. Newton. So this is our answer. So in this problem, they're asking for the term of the reaction of roller B, so that's BY. And we go down here, we do this, and we find that BY is equal to 42.6 kilonewtons. Um, so that's the indeterminate problem using superposition. Um, for a lot of these indeterminate problems, it's probably easiest to use superposition. Um, that's the way I like to do it, if you can. So... Um, Hopefully this helped.